Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for November 19th, 2021. Yeah, good to see everybody here this morning. Um, yeah, I've had a rough couple of nights trying to sleep. So let's do a quick meditation to go in the heart space. Um, taking the three breaths to move consciousness from the head into the heart. Hey, Kendall, Leon, hey, Ron, Marsha. A lot of great peeps on here today. Hey, Samson. So, yeah, let's just jump into the heart space before we do anything here this morning. So just putting your attention to your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Closing your eyes if you wish. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light, that energy, that love of the earth up into the heart. Then connecting heart to heart to creation, source, soul, creator, God. Breathe in that unconditional loving light energy into the heart. Now the third breath is breathing in both from the earth and creation. Bringing both those energies together within your heart and it moves you into the heart. All right. <clears throat> so um, our fifth question is Friday. If you are here live, please do join us in the chat side here. And if you have questions, please do drop them in the questions tab. And otherwise, we'll begin with a couple of questions off of the internet here. Uh, let's see. A uh, question from Robert. Hi, Brian. Tell us about the new, not yet named tensor ring you had at the Radionic Symposium. So the, the ring that we made for the recent Radionic Symposium is actually the Wisdom Ring. Um, the Wisdom Ring that we were distributing there at the Radionics Convention wasn't quite fully what this is now. But um, again, the rings that you may have received at that time are all upgraded to what the newest rings of the Wisdom Ring contains. So they are the wisdom rings. Uh, if you're using them with radionics, we have the two different sizes. Um, the larger size, the three and a half inch, is the ones that fit around most of the beakers and the wells on the machines that you use. Um, so, yep, the wisdom ring. Which the wisdom ring we actually have on sale right now for our pre-Christmas. We are doing the, um, the, the trio, the alchemist set of rings. And we're also, which you can do individually as well, and we're also doing all of the wisdom rings. Um, so the two sizes and the pendant. <clears throat> all right. Seems like our internet gets disrupted here every, every momentarily. If it does, we'll switch off here to a different, to my phone. Um, let's see. And then Robert goes on to say, I know an energy empath that has emotional and physical trauma and a lack of trust and belief in herself. Her health problems are numerous, and the golden fire and the everything tensor rings are too powerful for, for her to be near. Do you have a tool recommendation for her? So, yeah, you know, the everything ring is definitely not for everybody. That one's a little chaotic um, for some. For some who can get in there and use the everything ring, it's phenomenal. Um, and the golden fire, um, yeah, it can be abrasive to some people for sure. But the wisdom rings are a ring that is gentle, peaceful, yet more powerful than anything we've worked with. So the wisdom ring is the one that I would suggest for anybody who is sensitive to energies, um, who the other rings are too much. The wisdom rings bring through a field that is very subtle and peaceful. But yeah, like I say, super, super powerful in its transformation and its abilities. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see if we had a, another another question here. Oops. Let's see. I have a few questions on on construction of rings, which <clears throat> we try to you know do those personal instead of doing construction of rings here on the fifty question Fridays. Let's see. So no, it looks like we have some other questions that are a little bit more personal in nature. Um, let's see. Uh, here is one. So uh, somebody's asking about I have the original wings to talk. I noticed that you came out with a pendant size that has the wisdom frequency as well. Does the larger size version have the same benefits? So for the original wings of talk, um, it's still a great tool, which we have on clearance right now. Um, you know, it's still a great tool, but in, you know, the, the on the wings of talk, the, the updated version, the larger version, <clears throat> excuse me, and the Wings of Talk pendant. Um, these the, the two new ones are, um, and they're the same energetics, the pendant and the On the Wings of Talk. And they are such a huge step up above the, the Wings of Talk. Um, so they, they, are, they are quite a different energy um, between those two, the Wings of Talk and the, the newer versions. Let's see. And then um, the person's asking about a uh, issues with being around somebody who's vaccinated and feels that it drains them. Um, you know, there's, gosh, one of our good friends, uh, Jeanette Crowley, actually just did a, a live um, Facebook Live here, I think last Friday, on what she channeled um, with with white eagle and basically they talked about the vaccines and stuff because none of us want to step into that that pot because it's um there's so much emotions and beliefs and everything else um and just craziness going on around all the belief structures with that but what i can say is is that um as there's so many belief structures we can simply release um a lot of our reactions to those things that we feel like we have physical reactions to somebody who's not or is vaccinated or or whatever whatever all the the stuff is that's going around um it's uh we can release our reaction to that very simply and easily um you know especially with these new tools these new fields is that um <clears throat> it's changing our reaction it's changing our reality it's changing our world and then too so you know if you do get a vaccination or if you don't if you do get covid or if you don't you know when you step back and look at everything we can shift everything energetically with consciousness using the tools with intent and attention um, with these new tools um, we can shift all of that so when you take a farther step back out of this big old mass of muddle and chaos and craziness, um, things look a lot different and you can see things that it's um, from a different perspective where we're basically, we can shift anything energetically. We, we truly, truly can. Um, so don't get too caught up in anything right now. Um, you know, there's so much going on also, you know, I've put up a few different posts on social media here recently from some other friends like Aluna Joy, um, from uh, uh, Dr. Black with uh, the Hathors, um, or Meg uh, Blackburn. But I mean, there is, there's so much um, going on with the cycles and with um, humanity right now and the time cycles and just everything within the universe right now that things are being held for us right now to where we are stepping into more of a creator status so we really need to be conscious and aware 
of what we put our attention onto and what we allow to come in and influence us. So the more that we can stay in the heart right now, right here, all of you, the more we can stay in the heart and we are sent out from a higher perspective of all the other crap, it is easy to get caught in all that stuff. But if we can step out of that and in the heart and we can hold space, that's what we all need to do. Um, you know, that's in, in all of you that are here, I know that's what a lot of you are doing because I know a lot of you personally. So please do stay in the heart and stay out of all the stuff. And for you on your own journey and path, put your attention onto the things that you wish to create and not feed into the other stuff that brings up fear. It's all about discernment. If something causes you fear, causes you to pop out of the heart space, it's probably not what you want to put your attention onto. This isn't burying your head in the sand or spiritual bypassing. This is us stepping into being creators, holding the space that we need to hold for everybody else on the planet. Um, anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's just, um, yeah, we are all such powerful, powerful beings, and it's what we feed. It's what we feed our attention and energies. Okay, so internet questions. I think we are done with those. So we'll pop over here to questions. Actually, I'm going to check out the chat, see what's happening. Hello from Cape Cod, Australia. Oh. Yay. Great people hanging out and chatting here this morning on the chat. So please do join us live here one of these times. I know a lot of people watch afterwards. All right, so got a few questions going here. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Will you consider making a meditation based on parts work? This is the understanding that human consciousness can fragment in, into different parts. Usually the fragments are opposite to one another and can be in conflict. So, you know, that is a thought. It's kind of the brain balancing one um, is one of them. But, you know, in reality, when we go into these higher spaces, it harmonizes those things, especially if you, if you had your intention on to, um, you know, that you wanted to um, <clears throat> harmonize these fragments of consciousness as you've seen it, you know, um, you have the intention that that's what you want to do when you step into those higher spaces, when you step into those meditations, you know, we sit with the wisdom rings, whatever it is, or again, again, you don't need the ring. Go back through the 50 questions Fridays. Um, in the past couple, we've done meditations to hold that space to where you can be in that space. And, you know, we're all holding the space together to where, um, you know, it's easier to access at first. So, when you go into those high spaces and you are transcending all of that stuff and as you transcend all that stuff it um it harmonizes everything it shifts and changes everything so <clears throat> um and, and that's just what i feel about uh the, the question here about doing the meditation based on the parts work of bringing everything together harmonizing um integrating all of that it's it's simply happens and occurs especially if that's your intention and then you let that intention go when you step into those higher spaces um it's really amazing right now when we're working in these new fields the things that occur and um the less we hang on to them and that's what i'm working on right now is is in the new workshops i'll be teaching here um in 2022 it's not going to be focused on the issues stepping out of the issues it's going to be more focused on the top of that speed bump. It's going to be focused on um, basically simplicity in getting there so that we don't keep focusing attention onto the issues because the more we feed something with our conscious awareness, the more it stays there. Um, <clears throat> so that's just part of this whole new paradigm in the way of doing things is, <clears throat> huh, excuse me, 
almost over my cold that I've had for three weeks. The virus is doing something good in me. I'm, 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 I'm trusting for sure. So anyway, yeah, check out the the meditation on the wisdom ring. I think it was from last week. And and um, Amber, who my niece who works here, she's gone through on all of the YouTube um, versions, the YouTube up YouTube uploads of the Fifty Questions Fridays, and she has um, put everything into timestamps and subject headings. So if you go to the YouTube channel for Twisted Sage. And you go to the 50 Questions Fridays, you can find all those headings and timestamps so you don't have to wade through anything. Um, let's see, another question. This leads to internal resistance and diverse creations. I find your meditation releasing our ancestors and the one working with your soul incarnations a good starting point for harmonizing and aligning all parts of the consciousness. Yes. Um, yeah, and then that's it. Just finding those those different meditations that resonate to you. Um, you know, when you look through there and you scroll through, um, you know, I intend that they all pop out the questions that you are seeking or the certain episodes and finding the questions in there. Um, because when you sit into the heart space and you have the intention of what you're looking for, you're asking your soul to bring through what you're looking for or your guides or however you work it. Um, you know, I just work with my soul. Um, you can work with your guides, um, your team. So actually a lot of times I'll just ask the universe, all right, just bring me what it is that I need. And then when you're in the heart space and you go to sit down to, some, for, to look for something, that information should pop up a lot easier. So, you know, we don't have to walk through the world so mundane and just using our logic to find things. We can ask and allow those things to be presented to us. Uh, Victoria, good morning. What is the difference between the three talk items listed on the website? Dependent, the remediation device, and the energy clearing device. Uh, certainly. So we had the, the Wings of Talk and was our very first one um the wings of talk and i don't remember i think we call that the wings of talk energy remediation device Let's see with our google ai we just can't put wings of talk and on the wings of talk for the second version we have to put in the title of what it is for for this google program to work um, for our website so we've had to change names over the time and they're a little bit more confusing in reality wings of talk is the original fantastic tool on the wings of talk is the newer version that contains the energy of the wisdom rings as well and plus it's just it's it's an entire new version the wings of talk pendant is also in this new version of the energy so no and i have a two inch harmonizer ring around mine um the thicker gauge the Wings of Talk pendant is also in this new energy, and um, you know, I I would suggest getting these. I really do because they are going to just take you so much farther. Um, you know, they they are with this new energy that we're working in. It is um, it's just flipping amazing. It, it truly, truly is. Um, I see you have the Wings of Talk. Pendant, uh, Renard. I see you have the wings of talk pendant combined with the harmonizer ring. Yes. So this is that heavier duty harmonizer ring. The light one works too, but actually the heavy duty harmonizer ring on the outside is the same twist and gauge. So they they nest well. They um and they look good together. So using the harmonizer ring with, I found, using the harmonizer ring with you know the wings of talk or with the um. The wisdom rings it's really bringing it into the physical because that's what the harmonizer ring does anyway not the harmony ring the balance and harmony ring but the harmonizer ring it is bringing things more into the physical um so the divine i am activator pendant we also had an add-on which is the harmonizer ring we've now switched that divine i am pendant to the um to the wisdom ring as well um um, it really didn't make much sense. The wisdom ring with the divine I am pendant is fantastic. 
but really that um, the the wisdom ring with the divine I am is is so much more than working with that harmonizer ring. Sorry, I've been, like I say, not sleeping well the past couple days here. Let me take a moment. All right. Cool. So let's see. Uh, Leon, you mentioned on a previous webinar that you used the 222 measure for on the wings of talk. It seems now that the energies of the new frequency tools can be anchored in any measurement similar to the everything ring. Yes. Um, we are still using sacred measurements to create the tensor field, to hold the energies, but in reality, um, the etheric templates now, the, the higher dimensional aspect of the tools are, you know, you can bring in, um, you can use any measurement for bringing in the wisdom ring. And so that has really opened things up a lot for us that we don't have to rely on specific measurements uh, or specific qubits um, to bring through the new energies because they're not reliant on specific qubits. Um, it's it's just a tensor field. So with the tensor field, that is where we're able to bring in all of these higher new energies. It's yeah, it's it's pretty pretty amazing um, what we're able to do now with with these newer tools. Uh, Mika, I have on the new on the wings of talk on my sits pyramid. Do I need a wisdom ring on it as well, since the on the wings of talk has a wisdom ring on it? No, actually, um, you do not need to put on the wisdom rings onto the pyramids um, because, yes, that on the wings of talk has the wisdom ring. So for the pyramids, um, I need to do an update on the website here over this weekend, hopefully. But the the pyramids now are ha they have the um, they have the alchemist set of rings that go with the pyramids now. And then they also have the on the wings of talk that come with the pyramids. So basically the new pyramids that we are selling, um, you know, as of a couple weeks ago, all have those newer energetics with them. Uh, we had a question last week about anchoring those energetics into the pyramid itself. Um, it is still carrying some of those, but, um, we need to still energetically update the pyramids here soon as well. Um, what is the best tool to use for assistance in Reiki? You know, if you are running Reiki um, physically and you're doing in physical sessions and you're, you're actually running energy out your hands, um, I would certainly suggest using the wisdom rings. Um, the wisdom rings are amazing, and when you're running energy with those, it's going to be, um, you know, it brings through, your, the Reiki acts like a carrier wave. They, they harmonize together, so you're bringing through the energetics of both. And if you're doing the distance work, you can still use the wisdom ring um, when you're running energy to a person, or you can simply set the wisdom ring down and as you were doing distance Reiki and you imagine them standing in this column of energy of the wisdom ring as you're doing Reiki on them, that's just another way that visualization and intention, um, just depending on if you're doing it in person or by distance. Oh, what books do you read currently? You know, in reality, I the last book I read was in 2014 was Tom Kenyon's Arcturian Anthology. Um, in the past six, six, seven years, I have um, not read many books because I used to read a book a week and, and I have a nice library that just sits like, I don't know, right here. And that's, you know, part of the library that's kind of a lending library and I have a ton of other books um, just on my own. I love Tom Kenyon's work, um, The Hathors and the Arcturian Anthology. Um, those were great on my path. But um, gosh, actually there is a book that I just ordered that I'm excited to read. Um, gosh, and I 
can't remember the name of it. It was a book that came out in 2012, and it was actually it's it's a it's a love story. It's a romance novel, but it is all about um, the seeding of of star DNA onto the planet and into humanity. I don't know. It was highly recommended, and I looked at it and I was like, oh man. It's out of print, but I found a copy, and um, so I'm getting ready to read that book here this weekend. But yeah, it's it's just that for for books, it seems like you know at, the reason that I stopped reading books is because we were moving at such an accelerated pace that it seems like when you write a book, it's it's already old news, old energy, um, and and there there are um, definitely exceptions to that, but. Also, I, I just really try not to put too much. I'm very particular about what comes into my my structure, my reality, my my belief structure, my system. Um, so, what I do listen to are um, Adamus from the Crimson Circle. Um, I watch his monthly podcasts. Um, that's one that I would highly recommend. Is going to thecrimsoncircle.com, and they're under the monthly webcast um if you go back to last month's there is a really great um presentation he does on zero point of the soul and bringing all the soul experiences back to this zero point um he calls it the art of benching phenomenal um phenomenal information for the mind um but that's it is i try not to get into too much mental information um the other outside input in influence that i that I participate with is Jeanette Crowley um, and the Center for Creative Consciousness is her website. Um, and she has a, quite a few free things out there, but most of her stuff are, you know, they're, they're paid workshop um, workshops that go over the course of like eight weeks. And I've been participating in those for about 10 years because a lot of the work that Jeanette does, um, Brenda and I, I've always been there. We've always been playing leapfrog with each other. And she just takes you to such high levels. Um, she has been working at mapping out the dimensions of consciousness for I want 26 years, I believe. So um, she's just another person that I really resonate with. Well, let's see. Have you tried to combine Untalk the key with the wisdom ring? And does it create a similar energy as the on the wings of talk? You know, and no, I have not played with that yet. Um, it, but it's it's interesting. The thought came up this morning to play with the key pendant and the wisdom ring just to see how that feels. I'm, I'm curious of that too. Can I use the divine I am Gaia sphere and place the regeneration Gaia on my ascension pyramid? My prototype package arrived yesterday. <laughs> Yay. Um, so yes, for the ascension pyramids, you can use um, the Divine I Am Gaia Sphere, or you can use the Regeneration Gaia Sphere. Either one of those two are going to be holding that same space for you. And actually, the Divine I Am is holding a little bit more. Um, and we may at some time um, switch those Gaia Spheres up as well. So... We're, we're working on a lot of prototypes with the wisdom ring. And so, you know, as with prototypes, it takes us a little while to, before we re release those into the world. So um, we are looking at, you know, like in maybe two weeks, we should have a whole new line of wisdom rings. It's just we don't want to get too carried away with the wisdom rings because even though the wisdom rings were a giant step for us, I mean, holy crap. All the rings that we've created in the past, we've been taking, you know, kind of baby steps. Well, yeah, some of them were bigger. Golden Fire was a bigger step. But and but then this wisdom ring, it's it's a giant leap. I mean, it is a leap. These wisdom rings, um, please do check out some of the testimonials on the website. It's pretty flipping amazing what people are experiencing with these and, and that I hear all the time and that I experience with these and those around me. Um, so the wisdom rings were a big leap in the tools. But I was asking Brenda the other day, I was talking to her about it because I was looking to see if, you know, if we need to make a whole bunch of new tools in the wisdom 
or if we are still stepping. And of course, we're always going to be still stepping, you know, no matter what, because we are expanding in consciousness. We're going to keep stepping up. But this, um, I couldn't see beyond where this wisdom ring is because to me, I see this field of just possibilities, infinite potentials within this field of the wisdom. And um, to me, it just kind of depends on which which way we go, even though we go always at once, um, in what comes next. And so when I was asking Brenda, I was like, okay, are we on stepping stones here? Or have we hit a little bit of solid earth to where we can put a lot of tools into the wisdom? And, you know, and of course, he's like, yeah, no, we're, it's a stepping stone. So we're not getting too invested into a whole lot of tools with the wisdom because, um, you know, the wisdom ring contains everything that the um, alchemist does. So, you know, we're going to have to eventually start phasing out some tools. The golden fire might be one of the next ones that we begin to slowly start to phase out. Uh, let's see. Have you tried putting the everything ring over the new wings to talk? I have both. No, Kendall, I have not worked with that everything ring with the new wings to talk with the on the wings to talk. But I do have some friends who have and they've said, holy wow about it. Um, yeah, so I'm glad that you have both of them. Please do experiment with that and 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 see. Because, you know, that everything ring has so many possibilities. And to me, it's one that if you can step in and ride that everything ring um, and, and bring through and bring things through instead of just getting lost in the, the, the chaos, the infinite potentials of the inner weavings of what's in that everything ring. If you can actually get in there and wade through and pull out, you know, the single strands of, of the energetics that you're after, it can be a super, super powerful ring that everything ring can. Um, but it, it's, it's a whole different, it's kind of like a, you know, you really have to step into your mastery. I feel to step in and use that everything ring. Um, that's something that, um, not on my path, um, to work with that everything ring, but I know a lot of people who still really love that ring. <clears throat> All right. Oh, good. The video is much less freezing and stuttering. Good. Yeah, if if the video ever does start to um, freeze up on you guys, I, I could tell that it did once here. Please do holler at me here, and I will um, I'll see if we can switch over to my, my phone instead. Um. Reading, reading comments over here to, with everybody. Um, let's see. I'm totally new and I just purchased the Golden Fire Regenerative 2 inches. So um, let's see. I'm assuming that would be the 2 inch Golden Fire Ring or the 2 inch Regeneration Generator. 2 inch Golden Fire Generator. I realize I'm very sensitive to EMF and router in my bedroom. Do you have suggestions for me on how to best use this tool? So if you have um, the tensor field generator, the spherical form, just sit it in your room, um, you know, sit it close to you. If you have um, just a ring, a single ring, sleep with it like underneath your pillow or close to you. So a ring will create a column of energy. And so with this column of energy that comes out of both sides, as long as that column intersects your energetic field. So let's just imagine that you have this field that's like 18 inches out from you and you have that ring, you know, anywhere within that immediate field, it is going to be um, bolstering your field to where you are the one that is transforming your field then is transforming those electromagnetics. Um, you know, and 
So yeah, if it's a ring, just having it close to you at night while you're sleeping is a fantastic way to do it. You can place it on your router, but um, just having it in your field, I feel is a much better way to work with these tools because these are training wheels. These are space holders. They allow us to where to get to the point to where our field is the one that is transforming the electromagnetics. Um, you know, because all electromagnetics are not inherently bad. They are discordant energy fields. And as we become more of a steady vibratory energy field, our, our flow is just, we're in the heart, our heart's electromagnetic generator, we are standing in our power, in our light, we become untouchable. Basically what that means is, is that a discordant energy field comes into your field, you harmonize it. And so then it does not cause you issues. That's where we want these tools and for people to be able to go to um, by using these tools and eventually not using the tools is to get to that space to where you are untouchable, to where anything that comes into your field is harmonized. Um, but you also have to harmonize everything within. Your field only becomes this beautiful harmonized field to where the things don't bother you as much, less and less and less, when you are also working with the internal harmonization, being in the heart space, um, just asking and allowing the soul to step in more and allowing the release of all the things that you may carry that are a discordant energy. Um, you know, whether there are old emotions or, you know, old situations or fears of the future, whatever they are, if you can release those, you become more harmonized and standing in your field. That's where we want to be. Um, let's see. I just ordered the Wings of Talk before the new version came out. Is there no way to attune the original Wings of Talk to the new Wings of Talk energies? You know, and so, yeah, I, we really try not to create tools that make other tools outdated so that they're, you know, not, because most of the tools that we create are consist constantly updated. Um, so with the, with the previous, with the wings of talk and man, and I, and I hate saying this, but you know, because I don't want to try to sell you on another tool, but if you get the, the wisdom ring, the three and a half inch wisdom ring, you put with that wings of talk with your intention that is going to shift it, that will bring it into the new. So if you have a wings of talk, get a wisdom ring. And like I say, I, I really hesitate on trying to sell new tools, especially, you know, when a person invests in this wings of talk and, um, you know, so yeah, my, my sincere apologies for that, that if you know that your old wings of talk isn't performing the way that the new one does. And, and like I say, I don't like to say it, but yeah, um, the wisdom ring and it is so worth the investment. The wisdom rings are, um, so just putting that with the old wings of talk will shift it. So that leads me to another quick thing that I want to say about the wisdom rings and working with the older rings. Um, so I have a good friend who, um, Marty Lucas, he's actually the one who we put one of his reagents of the Adam DNA into the etheric templates for the wisdom ring, which helped the wisdom ring go farther into the DNA of what the soul is incarnate. I mean, it, it, it helped the wisdom ring expand. So Marty was teaching at a show um, here last week and he sent me an email and he said that um, there's a gal who has some of uh, Slim Sperling's rings. She never leaves home without them. She had them there. Actually, I think that might be our friend who's the vice president or the president or the past president of the American Society of Dowsers. So she has, um, you know, one of Slim Sperling's rings, the one of 44 megahertz. And she was feeling the difference between her Slim Spurling ring and the Wisdom ring. So um, Marty had her take both of them together 
And you know you can create that third field between these rings. He had her working with the wisdom ring and the spurling ring, and it shifted Slim's ring. It shifted it. And I've heard other feedback here recently, too, about people who are working with the wisdom ring and other rings and how they shift them. And also with crystals, working with the wisdom ring and crystals is pretty flipping phenomenal. Um, you know, and again, we had feedback the other day for a gentleman who had, um, well, gentleman, lady, I don't, I'm not sure, had a bunch of carnelian. And they were all similar pieces, but when they used them with each of the pieces, it brought out those subtle, well, not so subtle differences between each of the carnelian pieces. Um, the wisdom ring, you know, and working with water with the wisdom ring, um, that was something that I've had a couple of people who just, that they work with water, the consciousness of water. And I was witnessing them working with water to where, again, it goes back, it works with the consciousness of water, and it followed it back to, you know, the origin of water, just like it follows back to the origin of the human, um, which is way beyond the earth. I mean, the consciousness of water and water is older than the earth. Um, let's see. I have a golden fire generator and my old wings of talk and my work locker. I think my work feels more balanced and clear discord. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so, um, and Myrna, we're, you know, and I, I usually don't say people's names because I am terrible with names. So my apologies if I uh, totally slaughter your name when I say it. Um, but the, the question about the old wings of talk and, and getting the wisdom ring, another thing that you can do because these tools are quantum, if you cannot get the wisdom ring right now, sit with the wings of talk and ask that those new energies come through. It will hold it for as long as your attention is there. So when you're working with it, you could totally bring through the energetics of that. Just, you know, it's just like, um, the Wings of Talk webinar that, that we did for the original Wings of Talk is, you know, and I talk about in there, just like the Golden Fire and Light Wand, that they are a quantum tool that you don't necessarily need to have the physical one that once you see it here in a photo or a photo on the website or in that video, we give you the attunement to it. Um, so if you go to the On the Wings of Talk page and you sit with that photo while you're in the heart, you can bring the energetics of that through. And so, you know, using an old wings of talk or a drawing of it, a printout on your computer on a piece of paper, you can bring in that energetics right there. Um, the old wings of talk or, or the drawing or the, the photograph would simply be a tool for your attention onto that. Um, if you get what I'm saying there, that with your attention, and intention, you can bring in that energetics of the on the wings of talk and the wisdom ring and all of it that comes with that. So, okay, back to questions. Well, hello again. <laughs> okay. We're hooked up to my phone. This was only meant to be a temporary space to do webinars because 
you know, at our other place where we had the t-shirt studio set up, it was, I was making that into the green screen room and the um, dedicated filming room. But it's getting cold out, so it's a little cold over at that place. So I might have to get solid internet hooked up here in this building again. But we're back on to the phone internet, so my apologies for getting cut off here. Let's see. So I was just back over here to chat. All right. Okay, back to questions. Here we go. Let's see, Victoria, what is the talk remediation device for? The Wings of Talk. Um, the original Wings of Talk was created for um, a couple of different people who were professional clearers, but they had issues with uh, portal vortexes and then also entity attachments with people. So in the old paradigm, that is what I made the tools for because that was what I was doing and that's what we needed at that time in the old way of being on this planet was the clearing work, the clearing of entities, the clearing of non-beneficial this and non-beneficial that. And we're stepping beyond all that now. Um, so the old wings of talk, it's a, still a fantastic space holder. And it still allows you to do a lot of your own internal clearing and healing work because healing is simply clearing so that you can heal because we are naturally healthy, wealthy, and wise. Um, once we get rid of debris and connect and drop our baggage. So the original Wings of Talk was one that um, was one that was working very well for the environment for geopathic and geomagnetic lines and portal vortexes and all that. So, you know, the original Wings of Talk is basically that it's an, and it's an energy remediation device. It, it is clearing dense energies where the on the wings of talk is working in a different way so before any of the work that we would do it's basically we were working from here trying to affect there which there with higher dimensional stuff where creation starts it trickles down into the here so for an example just to make this more tangible most energy healers and workers will see that cancer begins in the emotional field and then, you know, all the stuff that we hold on to and it just becomes heavy and dense and it manifests down into the physical. So we would go through and we would clear everything here so that would allow the physical to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. So, um... Instead of the wings of talk in the way that we just did everything, you know, a year and a half and before um, was we were always working from here and trying to affect the there. The new tools are encompassing everything, 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 everything. And so when we work, we are working from everywhere and we are affecting everywhere. It, it's just, it's, it's so much bigger, so much bigger in the way that we do the work. And then plus, it also takes us into a different perspective because the other working was from this perspective. And when you're in the muddle, you have a whole different perspective than when you're looking at it from a different space, from a higher space, from a different vantage point. It looks so much different. So that's another way that these newer tools are changing is that it is allowing us a whole different perspective in seeing what it is. Um, and then it's not work anymore. It is simply awareness, conscious awareness onto something, and then it shifts. That's just the beautiful thing about these new energies is it doesn't take the work. Um, Let's see, my husband and I have the Taurus pendant and wear them daily. Would the harmonizer ring add to its energies? Or would it be better to use the wisdom ring pendant with it? Um, 
So, you know, it would be better to use the wisdom ring with that, uh, with that silver Taurus pendant. And, um, as far as the size goes, I'm just trying to remember. So the, the silver Taurus pendant is the same size as the wisdom ring. The wisdom ring is, is this size here as well. Um, they're all this inch and a half ring. So with that wisdom ring, um, I'm curious to see how that would set. If, if you would like, Elaine, if you would like to send me an email to Twisted Sage at Hotmail, what I can do is I can go over and experiment physically with the wisdom ring and that Taurus pendant and see if I can find um, something that would nest together nice and look nice and, and not be you know, big and clunky for you to add to that Taurus pendant. Because that Taurus pendant is still phenomenal. And I feel adding that wisdom ring to that silver Taurus pendant is going to be pretty amazing. So yeah, if you eat, mail me at Twisted Sage at Hotmail, I will um, look into that and get some photos and send off to you and give you a recommendation that way. Alexa, how many feet does a rings field expand up to? Um, so with a tensor ring, it is creating a column only the size of the ring. You know, a larger ring isn't any more powerful than a smaller ring, um, but it's just the size of the field. So it, imagine it like a flashlight beam, a straight flashlight beam that extends straight out. So with that beam of light, that, that beam of energy, it is the most potent right in the center. So imagine dipping that into soapy water and you have that bubble, that sheen. It is definitely the most potent right there within that sheen. That's why the practitioner rings are so phenomenal because you can bring them over the body in working on specific areas. Um, but how far this column of light goes, it goes for miles, this column of light does. Um, you know, in the physical, it goes for miles. So using the, the wisdom ring or using any of the tensor fields, again, it's just the column. If you put a quartz crystal, any quartz crystal inside of any tensor ring, it will expand that energy field out into more kind of like a funnel. You know, it just kind of funnels the energy out. But in order to create a field that expands in a 360 degree area, you need a tensor field generator. So the tensor field generators are ones that instead of creating a column of light, it creates more of a sunshine out from that ball, that ball of the four rings and that geometry, the tensor field generators, it creates a sunshine that just radiates out in all directions. Um, so, you know, the uses of that one, we, you know, one, I usually classify the tensor field generator as being more environmental, where the rings are working more for localized areas. But again, when you put the ring on anywhere, a pendant, a, a bracelet, on your pillow, in your pocket, it is still going to be working for your entire field. Hola, Samson. Could you explain? Expand your experience with the on the wings of talk and it creating a different space or portal. Oh man. Um, so I'm still working with the on the wings of talk and the wisdom ring field. Um, when I work with the on the wings of talk, honestly, I am working more with the field of the wisdom rings than I am working with, um, what the on the wings of talk pendant brings through. So even though I've constantly had an on the wings of talk, either the larger version of my pocket or the pendant sized one with me at all times and under the pillow and everything else, um, I've been more utilizing it for the energetics of the wisdom ring. Um, I haven't really truly sat and work with what the on the wings of talk brings through. I have not consciously sat and worked with all the potentials and possibilities of these. So I really do not know the on the wings of talk energetics that well, even though I fully immerse in them all the time. 
what I can tell you about them though is when working with these is that um, when something comes up into my awareness, whether you know it's an ache and a pain, a reaction, a situation, uh, whatever it is, that I just go into the heart space, I put my attention onto like that situation. So, you know, I was just imagining a situation and putting my attention onto there. <laughs> Jeez. And I can feel the shift take place. <sighs> it becomes a part of your field and it becomes, um, you know, just a part of you because these wisdom rings are holding a field that allows your consciousness to come in your divine awareness your consciousness and to start to shift those shift the patterns shift the energetic patterns the creations of shift the situations however you see it um powerful powerful stuff again so no, I am definitely relying on all of you who have the on the wings of talk or are getting the pendants to please leave feedback on the website. And, and anybody who has the tools, I do implore you to please do go to any of the product pages and go to the feedback and leave feedback for us on specific products. Or you can just go to, when you go to the resources page on twistedsage.com, and you go to the um, the testimonials page. I mean, there's I don't know how many testimonials. There's you know like fifteen hundred or something like that. You know, positive testimonials that we have on that page, and um, you can go in there and leave your own testimonial because um, the thing is, is that you know like with the on the wings of talk or any of these other tools, there are some phenomenal people in here that are working with the tools and they're working with them in ways that we would not have imagined. And they are getting tangible results. And when you start to share the ways that you work with the tools or the results that you are getting, especially when you share the results that you're getting in the ways you work with them, I mean, it allows other people to step in and do that same thing. Um, you know, so yeah, we, we do appreciate the, the testimonial. So when you find out more about it, Samson, please do let me know. Um, Let's see, Leon, I do not have any new tools since the chalice, but I have felt a massive shift in the old tools. It's like day and night. Yes, I tell you, whenever we bring in anything new into the tools, into the, the, the giant field of the tools, it shifts all the tools. It really does. Um, yeah, so thank you, Leon, for sharing that, that, it's, um, that you're noticing that shift in the old tools. It's been really fun too on the testimonials seeing people that talk about, you know, with these new tools, they're like, I could feel it a day ahead of time, or I felt it as soon as I ordered it, or I felt it that day of, and I open up the door and there it's sitting. And, you know, it's just amazing how these fields are so quantum and, and we're just ready for them and we just allow them in. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. Hey, Natalia, any news on your artifacts? No. Um, I took that artifact down to Denver last weekend to see about carbon dating and nobody wants to upset the status quo of earth's history. So, I mean, nobody who owns carbon dating equipment in the United States that I've been able to find, um, definitely no state funded state sanctioned universities will touch these things because they are going to change history. But you know what? There is so much out there right now, uh, archeological evidence, and it, it is surfacing every day and it shows the whole different history. I mean, everything from giants, you know, guy, I know a guy in New Mexico has got three foot skulls in a cave on his ranch and you don't let anybody in because every time anybody does the Smithsonian or somebody or the status quo comes in and takes the artifacts, you know, there's been the status quo who has hidden the archeological evidence all over the planet and all the books and all the knowledge. And that is releasing, you know, thank you, Internet, too. Um, and thank you for all those who share the things on the Internet because, um, yeah, so it's not true, but you can feel into what is true using your discernment. 
the heart space. Um, there's some beautiful things that are showing a whole different version of history of not only humanity, but the entire planet. And that's what these artifacts that I have are doing is that they are being carbon dated to, you know, 5,000 years before the supposed pyramids were built and they depict um, beings from Egypt like Isis and Anubis and, and all these beings and they're from Mexico. And, you know, it's just proving that the pyramids are older than 3,000 years old. I mean, oh my goodness, come on. Um, you know, I don't know. Beautiful things, beautiful things. That's all right brain rabbit hole stuff that I like to play in because I feel if you can pop the right brain a little bit, it allows you to not be so stuck there. So anyway, that's artifacts. No, nothing new on the artifacts yet for carbon dating. I hope to someday be a part of it when, um, when we find somebody that will carbon date these in our gung-ho about upsetting the status quo of history as we're told it. Uh, DB, once a ring shifts, is it a permanent shift or does it need to be periodically refreshed? Oh, so um, I assume you're talking about working with like um, how our friend worked with one of Slim's rings and they worked together and it shifted Slim's ring. No, that's a permanent shift. Um, and then when we when we do any of the work by updating the etheric templates, the, the higher dimensional counterparts of the tools, that is also a permanent shift that goes into all the tools. Uh, JR, I got an old alchemy pendant set in separate pieces before you made the combined pendant. Could I send it back to be made into one pendant? Um, Yes. So, JR, I'm not sure what the the cost difference on that would be. Um, but yeah, we can certainly do that. Uh, just um, send it back to P.O. Box 101, Buffalo Gap, South Dakota, 57722. I'm going to just type in that right here. P.O. Box 101, Gap, South Dakota. Go to 57722. All right. Um, perfect. Yeah. And, you know, like I say, unless you want to write me an email first to see about what the cost difference would be, basically, if you add it up on the website, you know, what the cost of the Alchemist rings are and the, you know, the set and what the pendant is, that, that would be the price difference on it. Um, any chance of ever creating a generator in the style of an ornament for a tree or a wind chime with the tensor measurements and maybe a generator as the strike between the chimes? Oh my goodness, yes, that has been something since, you know, for 10 years I have wanted to make cool sound instruments, chimes especially, that are tuned, um, you know, and I would love to meet a chime maker who can tune these things, not only using the sacred measurements to, you know, like the pyramids are, the sacred measurements, but also the diameters that they can create specific, um, you know, notes. And so I would love to meet somebody who is a professional wind chime maker to make a set of chimes and then to co-create these. And then we bring in the etheric templates into them so that way when the chime is chiming and the sound is, is reverberating, that it is expanding that field because sound and light are great carrier waves for these energetics. So yeah, a chime, a sound room, it would be pretty flipping phenomenal. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, let's see. Going back to the chat side. Let's see. Um, yeah, I made the comment about um, slowly phasing out the golden fire. Leon, I'm in the golden fire ring right now. I love this ring more than anything. <laughs> yeah, I know the golden fire is phenomenal. Um, it's just that, you know, the golden fire is in all of the tools now. Everything that we've made since then, you know, except for the chalice. The chalice is pretty much a standalone energy of the chalice. But um, 
everything else, the golden fire is in there. And um, as long as people are still resonating with the golden fire, we'll keep it around. But that was such a, we made so much in the golden fire. I mean, just about everything we had and multiples of it are, are in the golden fire. And um, we're really trying to simplify, simplify. Yeah, the four gauge super heavy duty rings are fantastic for sure. Um, yeah, we'll have a, a wisdom practitioner ring hopefully here in the next two weeks and it's going to be a medium gauge. Um, but like I say, we're still, we're still playing with, with things. So we really don't know for certain what we're going to release. Um, Let's see, and Leon still like the golden fire water ring from the 5G package. I know that is a, you know, the, the, the golden fire are such a versatile tool. Um, lunar eclipse. Some people were talking about the lunar eclipse last night. Um, is there a benefit to use multiple wisdom rings together like the one and a half inside the three inch? You know, no, really. Um, when you are using the same energetic ring and you're just adding multiples, um, you know, we see that it increases the, the potency by like 23% when you add another ring, but it's, um, potency is such a, mm, not really the right word, but it's, it's kind of like the, the effect of where we were just talking about those thicker gauge rings. It's, it's kind of like that. You add another wisdom ring here, and it's like it is being felt more on the physical. It's that style of potency where you can feel it more on the physical, but energetically, it's not going to change it. And that's the same with like a larger gauge ring. People feel it is more potent um, because you can feel it more on this physical plane. But energetically, it is going to be the same whether you're using a single ring or a dozen rings or a thick gauge or a small gauge. Um, Energetically, it'll be the same. Let's see. So we're almost done with time here. Let's see. What gauge are the wisdom rings three and a half inch? Um, these are 10 gauge. Yeah, 10 gauge. So these are the same gauge as our water rings, all the water rings that we create. Um, they're just a looser twist. Um, and I was trying to think of something else that I could compare the 10 gauge rings to. Um, holy smokes. I was just holding this up. And as the vibrations of my voice come through this ring, wow. Holy smokes. Okay, so I just learned something really new with this ring and the vibrations that come through it. Whew, that is interesting. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to start playing with this whole thing. Actually, it's vibrating off of the off of my jawbone is where the vibrations are coming through on this ring, and it is making my hand tingle. All right, fun stuff. Yeah, play with the tools. <laughs> That's all I can say is that we learn stuff every day with these tools. Um, pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Um, let's see, hey Kendall. Uh, Elaine, thank you. If I'm wearing a wisdom ring and also a tensor field generator in my vicinity, will they interfere with each other? No. So all the tools are going to harmonize together. Um, you know, it was kind of like we were talking about using the wisdom ring and another one of the tools. Basically, if you, gosh, even try this is to take your tensor field generator and set it with your wisdom ring. And basically it is going to bring in that energetics of the wisdom ring into that tensor field generator and the tensor field generator will broadcast out those energetics. Um, so yeah, using your different frequencies of tools together is, it can be pretty amazing. You can find a combination that works really, really well for you. Um, tuning forks, good idea, Leon. I should try tuning forks with this. That's a great idea. Uh, yeah, I wanna try that too. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, I think we are done here for the day. I see it is 10, 10, my time. Um, 
next week we are not going to do a 50 questions friday it's actually my birthday next week yay so i'm going and it's black friday day after thanksgiving not sure what i'm doing yet if i can talk my daughter into let me go i'm going to go for a nice long motorcycle ride somewhere in the sunshine like arizona or something like that i don't know so anyway um next week we won't be here the following week uh should be here and um yeah look for a lot of changes coming up here in in tools over the next couple weeks three weeks to a month um you know i'm really excited about 2022 for twisted sage and for the tools and for humanity and for all of us and personally and you know collectively i just i don't know i feel really excited about everything now i tell you i've been doing the goddamn release work for so long I've been peeling like an onion for years and you know it brings a tear to my eye because it's like i feel like i'm getting so close to not have to do the work like we've been doing the work and of course man i cannot say enough about the wisdom rings on helping us get there and helping us do the work as it comes up um because it just makes things so simple in it yeah it just it it, it it changes everything so anyway all of you wonderful wonderful beings i wish you a most happy healthy wealthy and wise next couple weeks and yeah play in this field that we brought in last week and i think the week before um last week's webinar was flipping powerful when we all just even stepped in that day there was so much going on uh, just because we were holding such a great space last week so thank you all for always being here and helping hold this phenomenal space um and man yeah i would just like to keep talking sentiments but i'd better go so <laughs> all right much love everybody